see if there's anything here that's that's unclear. Um, you've got the first one correct. I think you 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 missed the decimal to the first time you went through it, but it is yeah. thousands, and it's just a little bit of an odd spelling. Um, can you tell me the next one for number two? Can we? Would that be the hundredths? It is, yeah. Hundredths, yeah. And four is probably the next easiest. We can look at that one next. Would that be thousand? No, that would be. That would be 10,000. So we're looking, it's just to the right of the decimal. And and um, the when you go to the right, you start with tenths. Okay. Tenths and then hundredths and then thousands. Well, there's all these zeros in the hundred and the tenths. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, ask, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm asking you about four. You went to three. Oh. Okay. I apologize. Yeah, it is 10. It is, uh, it is 10 thousands. trying to get you to do the easy ones first. Uh, that's a good strategy in most things is to knock out the ones that are, you already know. Okay, so that, that's the uh, tenths. That's right. And you are graded on spelling, so you wanna be very careful to make sure it's it's correct here. Okay, let's move on to number five. Mm -hmm. Could you read this one uh, out loud for us? Mm -hmm. It takes Pluto 246.7 years to orbit the sun. It takes Neptune 164.8 years, which take longer to orbit the sun. And how, and by how many years? Yeah, so it's really a two-part question. It's, it's, it's well, A, Pluto. which one, yeah, which one takes longer, Pluto? And then part B is, is to find the difference between them. Okay, so you're gonna take that larger number and subtract the smaller number. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give that a try and uh, let me know what you come up with. Okay. Um, is it different by one hundred twenty one point nine years? So that is not correct. So let's uh, let's uh, go through this and find your error here. Um, so the, the six, you have to borrow from the six to make five. So there's definitely yeah. a nine there. And then it's five minus four is one. Yeah. The four is smaller than the six. Yeah. So you have to borrow from the two. Was. Yeah. And then that you get. That. Okay. Yeah, that was my mistake. I just kept going. If... I'm just thinking it was swapped. Did your most recent test or quiz have you checking these? Do you remember? No, I have a test or I have a quiz tomorrow. tomorrow. So this okay. is what it's going to be. All right. So if you were to check your answer by adding it to the smaller number, you would have found that it was incorrect. Yeah. And that would have been, um, would have been your indicator. Okay, I better try it again here. Okay, so this is, uh, I'll read this one. Taryn Humphrey was ranked third at the 2004 U.S. Gymnastics Championships with a score of 75.45. What was the difference between her score and Courtney Cupid's score of 76.45? So they're, they're asking for the oh, it's, difference. It's a one. Yeah, and so you really, you really do need to show your work uh, because 
you're trying to to demonstrate your understanding and uh it's it's important that you 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 follow through so five minus five is zero four minus four is zero six minus five is one and you're right yes the difference is exactly exactly one Okay. All right. Now, uh, before we move to the second page, is the second page on your quiz tomorrow? Multiplying decimals? Yeah, there is going. No, we wrote it. It's adding, subtract, subtracting decimals. So okay. Uh, all right. Well, we. I mean, we can because this is new for you and and, and I. Because um, I, there could be some questions about how to do these. But do you have anything else you want us to review before your quiz? That would be more important than doing the multiplication stuff. No. Okay. So let's do a little bit of this. Maybe I'll look back at your notes from last time and see if there's anything that I see that we should um, we should review here. So, um, can you? Can you tell me how you were doing this in class today? Um, we weren't doing this yet in class. So you've never done this before? Well, we I've done it because I take a separate math lab thing in the morning. Okay. But as a class, we I think we did a little bit, but I was saying okay. it was like a quick, like, this is <clears> it. This is, this is not getting on the test. So you don't have to worry about that. And then we All moved right. on to things that are going to be on the test, like the box and whisker. Got box. it. Got it. Okay. So the, the thing to do here to multiply is, is you treat it, you, you ignore the decimals for the moment. Yeah. You ignore the decimals. What, yeah. And that and so little you, bit that we learned, it was like, it was weird because it was like, it can go, like the decimal goes over like one space or something. Yeah, we're going to so talk about that. So then you do like that. seven times three and put the decimal like it's a whole number. Right and there, then, yeah like move it that the amount that it shows above so so after you multiply you have to count the decimals decimal places in both numbers yeah and then it's like they're then both. You, so, you, so you count them so there's one in the one. in the top number and, one and in there's the bottom. and so you add those together and there's two total two, so you, so you go move over your, so that it'd be point yeah, you move it uh, left two one two times. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so you might think, oh, well, that's easy. I got that. Well, the next few problems could could be unclear um, about what to do. There's a few different like little variations on this. Um, so uh, while you do ignore the numbers, I would count the number of decimal positions before I started. So yeah. to me, there's to me there's so three total. One two. And then a one. So you, here's what you never count. You never count the zeros to the left. Yeah, you never count the whole numbers. Okay, and then you just multiply as you normally would without imagining there's no zeros. Or, I'm no, sorry, no decimal 20. there. Okay, and then you move the decimal now three times. Once, twice, third time. What what fills this empty position here? Zero. Yeah, zero. So your answer is 0 0.02. And if you're wondering why I didn't I didn't include this last one, you can lead off trailing zeros. So then the next one. I'm sorry? So the next one, would it just be zero? Because what do you mean the next one? The the well, number three. So it'd be two times zero. And that's just zero. Well, so this is like that one of those wrinkles. Let's let's count the decimal places first. Okay. There's three. Yeah, if you count this one, and you actually will find you can change this so you don't count it. But yeah, there's three total. All right. So now you take the two and you multiply it by the zero. That's zero. But then mm -hmm. that two multiplies the eight. Oh, so then that would be that'd be sixteen. Same. And there's your decimal. This one that I bring it over three spots. One, yes, one, two, three. three. Uh, so point. then it'd be point six. Then it'd be point sixteen zero or point one six zero. Yes. Okay. Let's look at the uh, next one here. So you count the number of uh, decimal 
places. You got two of them. So you take that two and you multiply it by the, the five, mm -hmm. so that which is 10. 10, zero with a carry of one. And then it's two times and this three, three plus the one. So seven. So, so it's 70. And then you move it back two places. So that'd be point seven. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so why don't you try number five on your own? Okay. And then there's a few other little examples we gotta do to really make this clear, but. So it'd be point one. Two, one. Yeah, so it ends up being 121 and then you move the decimal three times. Yeah. Yes, point 0.121, very good. All right, uh, let's go. Okay, so let's go to, let's go to seven. Okay, Six. same thing, it's just wrote in a different way. Well, but there's a couple of comments I wanna make here and, and the, the um, preference the preference is generally to write the bigger number on top mm -hmm. and the smaller number on bottom. Mm -hmm. That's the general preference. While it works the other way, this is this is preferred. Yeah. Okay. And we can talk about why, but I'll wait till there's a problem where, where there's an exception to this to uh, to discuss um, that. Okay. So it's four times eight, that's 32, carry of three. Four times five is 20, plus the three is 23. And then how many decimal places are there? There are four. Four this time. So we're gonna move it four places. One more. So your answer is 0 0.0232. Yeah. All right. So eight eight's kind of another little little variation on what we've been doing. So we'll do eight next. Uh, you finally got to multiply both digits. Okay. Um, so and there's another little thing in here. So the uh, Matt, like what I just said here, I said to put the larger one on top. Okay. And then the the smaller one on bottom. Now you're, this is new, but you actually do not have to line up the decimal places. In fact, you should not. You should not line up the decimal places. Okay. Did your, did your thing that you're doing in the morning talk about that? Um. Yes. Okay. All right. So here, it, but you still count. There's there's three decimal places, but you you just multiply as if they don't have the decimal places. Five times five is 25, carry of two. You take the five and multiply it by the one plus the, the carry, so that's seven. Five times the two is 10. No. And then when you go to the next number here, when you go to this one, mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to put a zero down here. Yeah. So it becomes one times five. We don't need that carry anymore. One times one and then one times two. So you add these numbers up. You're probably already doing that. Yeah. And this is the number that you move. Okay. And that's... 3.225. Yes. Very good. All right, let's look at uh let's look at 12. So this is a this is another example of a problem where you you don't want to you don't want to uh line up the decimals, okay? 
-hmm. and and if you do the the thing i've been showing you which is you put the the larger over the smaller it ends up looking like and you got to almost write it in reverse something like that and sometimes for students that looks a little odd because it kind of is um i would recommend uh I would recommend actually putting the 0 0.009 up top and the 0 0.7 on bottom. And, and so that, that thing I said about larger and smaller is only partially true. It actually ends up being the one with more significant digits is uh, goes on top, which. Okay. But, it, you know, that's a lot of words to say you're just multiplying seven and nine. And then you're moving the decimal four times. Okay. One, two, three, four, point zero, zero, six, three. Let's uh, let's do 11 next, and then we'll come back. I don't know why I did 12. I apologize for doing the amount of order. Let's do 11 next and come back to 10. It actually okay. worked out. Um, and that means I skipped another one that I didn't mean to. I skipped uh, nine. nine. Yeah, we'll come back to nine. Um, okay, so this one, I recommend putting the 3.96 on top and then the 0.4 on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and uh, try multiplying this for me. Let me know what you come up with. Okay. We got 1.576. That sounds correct. Because it's 15.76 if it's just four. And then you got to move the decimal place over one more time. That's perfect. Okay, let's do, uh, so set nine you can do on your end. Let's talk about 10. And um, this, one's, this one's got another, just a tiny little wrinkle. Um, there's a lot of like exceptions here in this, this part of the course when you're multiplying decimals. And I think that's one of the reasons most students don't, don't really seem to get them. So this, this is zero, sorry about that. This zero on the right here, this is called a trailing zero. Okay. And you can actually ignore it. Okay. Okay, now, now you got one of them, so I don't know if you would remember that, but it does, so you really want to look at this as 6.017 times 2 without the decimal there. Okay. So you write it as 6.017 times 2, and then you're only moving the decimal three times, not, not the four. So if you don't like what I just did, or if you feel like that's going to be confusing, you can do 6.017 times 2.0, but you then have to move the decimal four places, three plus yeah. the one. So th there's a reason that you can do this. It saves some time, but if you're, you know, hesitant, you know, you can try it on the, on the right. But uh, go ahead and uh, take a look at that. Hmm.
let me know when you have this worked out. So you think I should carry, I shouldn't add the from like the decimal point moving over. I shouldn't add that one. You you I only have three. You, you, you only have three, three. decimal. Yeah. You, okay. Three decimal places. Yeah. Well, if you did this one, you would have to do a whole row of zeros, and then move yeah. it over one, and you'll get the same number down here that yeah. you get the same number under here that you get here. So. Okay, so I got twelve point zero three four. That's correct. Okay, let's move to the uh, story problems 19 and 20, and then we'll come back to 13 through 18, time permitting. So okay. it's, it's, it's hard we also for us. Do 11. I'm sorry? We also got to do 11. Okay, yeah, you can do that one on your own too, if you need to, okay. but uh, let's get these in here. Uh, so the believe it or not, mail carriers used to actually walk door to door. Um, that now they just drive up or they drive to a big box and put everything in. But they actually did walk, um, especially in urban areas, really urban areas. So the average mail carrier walks 4.8 kilometers in a workday. How far do most mail carriers walk in a six day week? There are 27 working days. Day. Sorry? It's all this on seven day week. Well, so they work, the work week is considered five days, but you probably notice mail gets delivered on Saturdays. So that's why they call oh, it a yeah, six day. Oh, yeah, not Sundays. And not Sundays. Although you occasionally see them do deliver on Sundays. So there's always exceptions <laughs> to think about. But part A of this is how many miles are they walking in a week? Or I'm sorry, kilometers. So you take that 4.8 and you multiply it by six. Okay, so give that one a try for us, please. So I got 19.6. It doesn't sound like enough here. So six times eight is 48. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's where the mistake is with a carry of four. Six times four is 24 plus the four is 28. And then you move the decimal over to get 28.8. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we still have more to do. There's part B. Part B is uh, how far they will do in July. There are 27 working days in July. So 4.8 times 27. So it actually doesn't matter which order the numbers come in when you're doing this one, but, but give this one a try. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay. How are you doing on this one? Almost done. Um, 
that's reasonable. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. So let me just check here. Two times eight is 16, we carry one. And yeah, so I get uh, I get the six, I get 129. Yes, 0.6, perfect. All right, so let's look at number 20. That'll be our last question. We'll have to get this done here pretty quick. Um, but it's doable here. So Delhi charges $3.45 for a pound of turkey. And Tim wants to purchase 2.4 pounds. So we're going to multiply those two numbers together. Um, I'm going to work this out just with the, the time we've got here. So you start uh, you, you, the bigger number on top, but because it's got more digits, that's also another reason it goes on top. Yeah. Start with four times five, that's 20, zero with a carry of two. Four times four is 16, plus two is eight. And then four times three is 12, plus the one is 13. Put a zero because you're moving over to the two. You can cross out those carries. Two times five is 10, carry of one. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine. Two times three is six. Add these up carry as needed and then you're moving the decimal over three places one two three eight dollars and 28 cents for uh for that one there all right look get this down let me know when you got it i do all have right. to run after that i got another lesson here 6 30 but appreciate you letting me help you today and uh, probably you probably need about five, 10 minutes to get the rest of this done um, on your assignment there. So All right. All right. Well, that is it for us for today. Thank you so much, August. Have a great rest of your night. I'll see you next Monday. Right, bye. Okay, bye now.